Welcome back. I'm still talking to uh, Talks International editor Isabel Oakshot. Isabel, we're going to talk about this uh, mass release of uh, pr prisoners yesterday, 1,700 of them. Among them, uh, a lot of uh, domestic abusers, men who beat women up, beat their partners up. Yesterday, we, uh, I interviewed a victim you know, who told of the story of her partner on a Christmas day. She ended up on the operating table with her eye hanging out and her face smashed to bits. Uh, these are the kind of men that were being let out yesterday, uh, particularly terrifying. They were fast-tracked, let the domestic abusers out. Well, uh, these are the last person people you should have let out because they're the most likely to reoffend. They harbour these strange obsessions. They go back to the women they were tormenting. So we spoke to several yesterday. Some phoned in as well. So that's worrying. Later, I'm going to be interviewing a mother, uh, the man responsible for the machete murder of her 14-year-old son. A beloved son will be let out, will probably will be let out either today or tomorrow. It will be let out. She is spitting blood about Starmer. I mean, you can imagine. So we're going to be doing that later on. Uh, in the meantime, let's remind ourselves about the sheer joy of some of these uh, lucky prisoners, these jailbirds, as they were let out yesterday. A man walks out of prison with a duffel bag, £86 pound in cash. Well, where's a man going in life? You know, I'm going to go to probation. What am I going to do when I go on probation? I'm going to go probation, I'm going to sit there, I'm going to get bored. I'm going to start going back into my old ways. Maybe I might smoke, smoke drugs again, I'll go out, I'll start committing burglaries at night. Next thing you know, I'll be back in jail. How about getting a job? Could do that, couldn't he? I, I don't know, call me controversial. But, uh, uh, but you saw yesterday, you know, champagne, one of them was picked up in a Lamborghini and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, the Justice Secretary, Shabana Mahmood, has confirmed that uh, some of these people, in order that they shouldn't be homeless, uh, will be putting them up in, uh, in hotels, 100, 200 quid a night. I mean, the, the insanity of that, letting them out of jail and then having to pay for them to stay in hotels. Uh, it's madness, it's isn't it? Such an insult to law-abiding people, this. It's such an insult to all good citizens of this country. I mean, with each day that passes, you know, you feel as if this government simply wants to trample over common decency. How did they not think that this was going to happen if they let prisoners out en masse? How did they not anticipate that there would be these utterly shameful scenes outside prisons? You know, wouldn't it have been sensible to say to all of those that you're releasing, listen, you are incredibly lucky here. We've been forced into this policy. We do so with sincere uh, hesitation uh, and you are very very privileged to be getting an early release and if you so much as step an inch out of line and that means putting on silly displays of celebration in the full glare of the media outside the prison then you will be back here faster than you can turn heel why did they not think of doing that because that would seem to be the most basic thing, the most basic condition to attach to releasing those people early, that they behave in a certain manner. But of course, it didn't think about that. And so we have these utterly, utterly embarrassing scenes outside our prisons, which doubtless have been beamed around the world, making a laughing stock of our country. Just want to reiterate that uh, in about... Uh something uh, about three quarters of an hour. We're going to be talking to a mother. Imagine being this poor lady, a beloved 14-year-old son, macheted to death. The man responsible for that murder will be released under this release scheme. I mean, she is furious, but also, of course, incredibly upset. These are the kind of people who are being let out. You know, really dangerous people. And people who, frankly, you know, I hear a lot about this nonsense about, oh, prison, prison is primarily about rehabilitation. No, it's not, actually. Uh, rehabilitation is a good thing if you can make it work uh, behind bars. Prison is primarily, no ifs, no buts, it's about punishment. Uh, and then, secondarily, it's about keeping the public safe. A lot of these people being let out are behind bars because, frankly, they threaten the safety of decent law-abiding citizens. Uh, and these people 
are now walking the streets. Uh, a lot of them staying in nice hotels at our expense. Uh, this is, seems to me, Isabel, this is like Britain unravelling. Something's going sadly oh. wrong uh, in really? the state of Rome here, isn't it? Doesn't it really feel that way? Because all these things have happened in such a short space of time. You know, we're really only just recovering, I think, as a country from what happened over the summer when we had those awful riots with all the implications that, that, that they had on so many levels. What did they say about the deep unhappiness and divisions in our society? Then what did it say about two-tier policing and the way the justice system is being exploited for political purposes? We then hurtled into the dreadful Notting Hill carnage uh, fest, as you like to call it, which now, now a number of people are beginning to admit is just not a safe event at all. Uh, and now here we are hurtling into the let's let out all the prisoners great idea that this government has come up with. You know, if you if you try to envisage the worst sort of thing that could happen after a Labour government came into power, I'm not sure you'd actually have come up with this. I'm not sure I could have come up with, in, in all my creativity, yeah. <laughs> um, I could have come up with these scenes of prisoners like this one that we're seeing now, celebrating as they get out as an absolute, absolute insult uh, to the people of our country. And I, I just hope that this government is never forgiven for it. But it, what is so frustrating, I think, for people is that we're stuck with another four or five years of this. And I, I sense such a deep worry across all sections of society as to what our country, our great nation is going to look like. If this is what's happening now, where the hell are we going to be in three or four years time? Uh, exactly right. Uh, and uh, let's be, I didn't uh, trail this up, but uh, before we go to break, uh, uh, it's really good news, by the way. Uh, we've had two days uh, where uh, no migrants have crossed the channel. That was subsequent to something like 3,200 crossing over the past week or so. Uh, and uh, the, they keep on coming. And uh, we learned yesterday, to Keir Starmer's tremendous embarrassment, that Germany, that most liberal of uh, border-free countries is shutting its borders because the people of that country have said, you know what, there's two things we can't cope with. The sheer scale of this ongoing invasion, haven't got the infrastructure for it, and there's this other problem, Islamist terrorism, like we saw last month, the stabbing of 11 people in that square in Solingen. Uh, while they celebrated a diversity festival, of all things. A Muslim, uh, uh, an asylum seeker from Syria, stabbed 11 people in the death, in the neck and killed three of them. Uh, the authorities uh, didn't uh, name, didn't uh, issue a description because that would be very dangerous because people would realise he was a Muslim and we can't have that, can we? Uh, but uh, Germany finally, kicking and screaming, has realised something has to be done about this. So they're shutting their borders. We've got Donald Tusk now at the EU going, this is unacceptable. It, 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 not only is it acceptable, I think more and more countries around Europe are going to do it. They, but they most certainly are. I mean, I was looking into this yesterday and I've written about it in the paper in The Telegraph today, that a whole string of EU member states have actually taken advantage of the ability to do this under EU law. Uh, the EU actually allows you to close your borders um, for in exceptional circumstances, and they emphasise it should only be a last resort, you should only do it if there's a threat to national security, if there's no alternative. But in reality, very quietly, a whole lot of them have been doing this. And some countries, Austria is one of them, Germany as well, have actually done it several times already this year. So what we're witnessing here is nothing less than the disintegration, very quietly, because of far too many vested interests here. No one wants to acknowledge this. But we're seeing the disintegration of one of the, one of the fundamental tenets of the EU uh, and EU membership, and that is free movement of people and the whole Schengen zone, yeah. which allows supposedly yeah. uh, people to circulate without showing their passports and so on. People are realizing that this thing does not work. Doesn't work. In any 
It doesn't work. Not of, gla- of mass global movements of people. It might have worked back in the 1950s or something like that, pre-EU. It doesn't work in 2020s. And people are dying. Uh, and uh, when a country like Germany does, it comes to its senses after all these years. It was at the heart of the problem under Merkel, uh, absolutely porous borders. Uh, but when a country like Germany does it, uh, the big question is, uh, and we'll leave this hanging in the air, haven't got time to discuss it, uh, but uh, perhaps people would like to call me about it. If Germany can shut its borders, why can't Britain? <laughs>